decided to renovate my anchor locker. Well, really, I didn't have an anchor locker. It's just in the bow. It just goes down. It's just, you know, at the bow, right behind the uh, V-berth. Uh, there's no real floor in it. And one of the re or the primary reason that I did this is that when you bring the anchor up and you put the wet road into the locker and the water drips off of it, you know, yeah, I rinse it off the best I can, but I don't have a fresh water rinse. So all of that water just drips down, down this trough, all the way down to the bilge. And there's another little compartment area where my depth sounder is. And I just got tired of that smell and that dirt. I mean, it just, it was constant. I could clean that thing once a month and it would still smell because of the mud washing off and the dirt and the salt and whatever it is washing off or coming off of the road, just going right down the center of the boat. So what I did is figured out a way, an area where I could put a floor in and a drain to go overboard and hopefully that'll eliminate that odor problem. We'll see how it works. Well here's the process that I used and I learned a couple of things during this process. But the way I did it is I started off, you know, per usual, a cardboard template got an idea of where everything would fit. Um, wasn't a big area, but I made that template and then I measured from my freshwater fill where the uh, vent is. I measured from that down as far as, you know, underneath the line I drew where the floor was going to be. Then went on the outside of the boat, measured from that vent down to the water line had more than enough room so you know I don't want to be drilling a hole under the water line that's just not good so I got the template made oh and another thing so where the fill comes in for the fresh water the hose is there and that's got to go through where the floor is and jumping ahead a little bit here what I did is or decided I was going to do is I would just cut the corner off of that then when I fiberglassed this um, floor in, I would just go up that tube a little bit like with a uh, guard and that could also act as an overflow. So I got the cardboard cut, fit that. At the house I had some scrap um, plywood, cut that template, then I fiberglassed it on both sides. And I use Moss Epoxy because I like that. I've used it many, many times for many years. You know, it's one pump of resin, one pump of hardener. There's no measuring to it. You don't need to worry about that. But a couple of key things here is, and this is with any uh, epoxy project, make sure you stir that epoxy for at least, everybody I've seen and talked to recommends at least three minutes to make sure everything is mixed properly. You know, don't rush it. And I use the slow hardener anyway, so, hey, I got plenty of time. But I got that mixed up, got my fiberglass sheets, put a piece of plastic down, put the board down, pre-cut my uh, fiberglass, wetted the board out, put the fiberglass on top of that, wetted that out, and rolled it. Now since I had it on plastic, I did one side, the bottom side, flip that over, and then I did the top side. Let that sit for the day, came back the next day, trimmed it up, again, dry fitted it as to where I wanted it to go. Oh, and I washed the inside of that down with, of course I scrubbed it all down first with soapy water. But then I took um, uh, acetone and wiped it down to make sure I got a good seal with the epoxy and the fiberglass. So I got that marked out, set it where I wanted, but before I fiberglassed it in, I drilled the hole from the, outs or from the inside out. I knew where it was going to go. That way I could put 
the through hole in before I epoxied the flooring because that would really been difficult to try to get the drill down there and all of that. One of the tips here and one of the things I learned is once you put that through hole from the outside in, put the drain hose on it and put the clamp on it. I didn't do that. I put the floor in and you'll see here I epoxied that in, you know, up along the sides and down around and along the back and then I made that little uh, enclosure around the um, fill hose, brought that up about, I guess about two or three inches, not real far, but you know, enough. Let that dry. Next day I come back to get ready to hook up the drain. <sighs> Guys, I had a hell of a time getting that hose onto that fitting. I mean, I had to get the heat gun out, I heated it up, I did everything, I, but you just don't have enough room to really get any pressure and get that on there. So that took a little bit of time to get that done. My original thought was, well, I got to wait and see where that's going to go so I can put the floor drain in. Well, as it turns out, I really didn't need to do that. I figured out where the floor drain was going to go and was able to drill that hole and I put a 90 degree uh, floor drain in. This is the second tip though. What I did with that is I had a mushroom uh, through hole that was a 90 degree half inch and I used that. Well that sticks up about that much. It leaves a little bit of water sitting there. It doesn't drain totally. What I should have done is gone ahead and bought a regular floor drain and they've got them you know the, the same material but it's almost flush uh, you know it's like a sixteenth of an inch above and then you screw that in and they've got them in the 90 degree also I will probably change that out I'm gonna wait and see if that creates a problem with standing water and if there's a lot of water in there, if it starts to smell, I can change that one out. And when you're done with the epoxy, you know, you get the one pump, one pump. Now it took me four pumps of uh, resin, four pumps of hardener to fiberglass both sides of that wood in. But when you get done with that, it's advisable to either like I just use the old gloves and put that over the nozzles or the pump ends there and taped it off so that if there's any leaking you know it, it with temperature variation it could expand contract you might get a drop or two so it doesn't make a mess in your boat or wherever you're storing it and not that we've got to worry about it here on the boat but you shouldn't store the fiberglass um, or the resin on uh, concrete either that's not recommended but putting this tape on in the plastic I think that'll help uh, keep everything nice and clean. Well that was pretty much the project now it took a couple of days only because I needed to let the epoxy and fiberglass dry it was a pretty easy project though and I'm anxious to see how well it keeps everything clean and smelling good. Well until next time guys Happy and safe boating to you, your family, and friends.